Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Greetings to you all. Our sector faces significant disruption on many aspects of our businesses, centred around mail decline and e-commerce growth. This creates tension in the business to manage a sunset industry which is woven into the fabric of our societies. In New Zealand at least, this is seen as a government responsibility, matched against the excitement and pressure of a dynamic, highly competitive e-commerce driven parcel market. I'll reference a few ideas on how we've been bold in our decision making around mail, parcel pricing and our brand. These are not small ideas, but conscious and calculated bold decisions. From a global point of view, we're increasingly taking control of our future in order to be able to tell a different story and demonstrate our commitment to our future, to our sending and receiving customers. For example, even as a small postal operator, we're committing to a charter aircraft to service our key international market for at least our peak quarter. We've done this in a bid to take control of our supply chain as the global shipping crisis worsens, and we're committed to this to ensure we're capable of servicing our customers as we embark on our peak season and to accommodate the COVID surge from recent lockdowns in New Zealand. We firmly believe that we need to make our decisions more commercially focused while ensuring we have the right data points to make the decisions that we need to. During our first New Zealand COVID lockdown, we attempted to scale up our network and while we carried enormous volumes, we were unable to convert this into true commercial value. Thanks to these learnings, as we continue to navigate our most recent and ongoing lockdown, we were able to anticipate what's coming and implement volume constraints in easily controlled and manageable points in our network. We communicated clearly and transparently with both senders and receivers so they could understand why and how we were constraining volumes. This decision again was not taken lightly, but has been crucial to our ability to create and maintain value from our efforts. Similarly, in the international market, we implemented surcharging within weeks of COVID disruptions. It's not easy to ask our customers to pay more for a less reliable and slower service, but clear, transparent communication was critical to the success of recovering the new and rapidly increasing charges that we were facing. They have, in their own way, created the opportunity to transition postal to commercial traffic. Therefore, it's crucial we all act in a commercial manner to secure more e-commerce volume and retain and keep the postal channel sustainable in the long term. The decline in mail is well established and documented, yet it has been further accelerated by COVID. For NZ Post, this meant we've had to lean into this and make a series of decisions around how we played into this changing and declining space. We have competitors in our entire last mile who have cherry pick rates and yet who face no universal service obligations. And they can choose which regions to serve to maximise return, whereas New Zealand Post is required to provide a universal service as part of the obligations to our shareholders, the New Zealand Government. In response, we have proactively managed the regulatory environment to ensure we can compete on an even footing, allowing us to become more commercial and competitive in this space, yet still maintaining community engagement and support in New Zealand, remaining an integral part of the fabric of the country. New Zealand is one of the most liberalised and least regulated hyper-competitive postal markets. NZ Post faces direct competition in all our markets, domestic and international letters, packets, parcels and EMS express items. Due to New Zealand's urban rural population split and the nature of our geography, a long skinny country made up of islands with unpredictable weather and a propensity for earthquakes, the cost to serve remote areas is significant. However, it is a requirement that we maintain a high level of frequency as part of our USO. With COVID, there's been rapid transition between business and residential deliveries due to people remaining locked down at home. At this transition of delivery locations, there's a higher cost to delivery due to the widespread population and low population and delivery density. For mail, we've taken the decision to introduce zonal pricing to better reflect cost drivers for our volume sending customers and to level the competitive landscape. We are pricing and competing in a parcel market that's heavily commoditized 
We need to make commercially focused decisions to ensure we're recovering the cost of delivery at a national level whilst balancing that against the competitive risk of pricing ourselves out of the market. It is a difficult balancing act, but a necessary one. In some cases, this has led to customer retention conversations. These decisions are predicated on running a commercially viable, financially sustainable business. We decide to have those hard conversations with our customers. We we're offering a price point coupled with a service quality standard, and we weren't prepared to step back from that. Happily, we haven't had to have too many of these conversations, but they are a reality of where we find ourselves. And it is a crowded market. We continued the story through our major rebrand in June 2021. We we're consolidated from many brands, from previous branding decisions and acquisitions to, into a single national brand, NZ Post. We're focused on building value to our customers and differentiating ourselves in a market through obvious levers, such as consistency, reach and service performance, and now increasingly through value adds and customer focused benefits. This includes elements such as expanding our delivery options, customer notifications, delivery choices, and improvement of NPS and customer metrics to ensure we are New Zealand's carrier of choice. These have proved crucial during COVID because we already had communication channels in place and operational capability to help manage the surge in volumes and the health and safety imposed requirements of contactless delivery. Previously, we had several brands in the market servicing different market segments leading to confusion between our own brands, let alone of our domestic and international competitors. Brand consolidation continues to generate very positive feedback from our customers, both sending and receiving. As we continue to improve our customer experience through our market differentiation work, our focus has included receivers as well as senders. These not only are our customers, but they're our customers' customers. And if we're not meeting their needs, we're never going to differentiate ourselves in the market. Receivers are no longer anonymous. We need to care about them because our customers care about them. And if they have a great delivery experience, we, need, we know they're more likely to order more from our customers again and select NZ Post as their delivery agent of choice, driving sending behavior into our network. Receivers also influence our sending customers they demand change and we need to change how we service them and therefore the service we offer. Examples include seven day delivery trial, evening delivery enhancements, improved tracking events and item visibility in our network. We need to be and have become customer obsessed. Through the increased use of data and market insights, we've gained understanding into what our customers are doing and what we need to focus on to continue to be their delivery partner of choice. Our quarterly market intelligence report, the e-commerce report, NPS monitoring, and higher levels of engagement with customers, both sending and receiving, around their needs is driving insights, which are refined and turned into product, service, and solution ideas. So with the above in mind, New Zealand is a small country at the bottom of the world. In some ways, this has served us well in response to the pandemic, and I think New Zealand's approach is well documented on that point. However, with that being said, we're at the bottom of the world physically, and our transport links have changed dramatically. We've had to be creative in our solutions to continue to service our volumes, both into and out of the country, including launching new clearance models such as the Sea Freight e-commerce clearances, a market-leading outcome in New Zealand. Our costs, like many, if not most, designated operators have skyrocketed and resulted in the need for introduction of cost recovery surcharges, particularly for our most distant destinations, as we seek to maintain a commercially practical connection with the world. COVID fundamentally changed how our global air carriage functioned as an industry. It requires us to put enormous focus and effort into airline load efficiencies route planning and forward operations. Where we are in the world makes this crucial. We've improved load efficiencies by 67% since the beginning of COVID, and I'm proud to report significant gains in this space, which have significantly aided our goal of being carbon neutral by 2030. 
I've also taken the decision to pay for carbon offsets for all consumer parcels because I know this is what our customers care about and it's important that we lead the industry in New Zealand and help answer our nationally stated sustainability goals. This is about NZ Post being a good corporate and global citizen. Already we have noticed that a significant portion of the market tenders in New Zealand score sustainability as a key decision factor in choosing logistics providers. Responding to this demand early and comprehensively supports both economic and environmental sustainability and sets a positive industry example. While this might sound odd, this is key to our business continuity and future resilience. We as a nation postal operators are essential services and our people are essential workers. Daily they are out delivering what people care about and they are doing so with their personal commitment for which I am both proud and grateful every day. Given this, we need to take time to be kind to ourselves and to others. In NZ Post, our response has been to implement a series of programs around all aspects of safety and wellbeing for our people. A practical example of this is our partnership with Mentimia. This is a deeply engaged digital platform that helps people improve their daily mental well-being through science-backed tools and expert content. Co-founded by Sir John Kerwin, a famous retired All Black and champion of mental health. A final few words to leave you with. I've covered a variety of distinct yet interrelated topics I'm sure many are familiar and will resonate with you. I hope I've given you a flavour of the many currents we and NZ Post are having to navigate to enable and facilitate global trade in a world beset by COVID-19 now and likely for some years to come. I think positivity, flexibility, agility, willing to try new things and acceptance that some will fail, many will succeed are elements of the mindset we all need to apply to enable us to move from surviving to thriving in the face of the many challenges and equally many opportunities COVID has created. Thank you for your time and for the opportunity to contribute some thoughts from NZ Post to this year's UPU World Leaders Forum. Haere rā, goodbye and farewell. <laughs>